Hey guys, what's going on? I am Sam Crack. Right here is the C6 Corvette Grand Sport, still sitting on a uh, wheel dolly, still sitting up in the air. The good news is I've got pretty much most of the parts I need to get this car back on the ground and likely running as long as everything works in there. We'll get to that later. But first, I wanna give you a quick pizza car update. I found a few other things wrong with it and I want you guys to be caught up to speed on it. So let's shoot over to the pizza car. First and foremost on the DXP car, something which I have not shown you, but I will show you very soon. Right here is the ABS module location. It's been removed. And also down here, you notice the broken motor mount has been removed as well. This motor is supported by a few mounts. So it's okay that this motor is not in, obviously, because we're not driving it or moving it anywhere. Uh, so that's out. One other thing I feel like I showed you guys, but didn't explain very well is this clip. Now, if you look real close, it's cracked. The harness itself is cracked. However, when I saw it, it was pulled apart a little bit. It was not making a connection. I'm fairly certain this clip right here uh, has a lot to do with the major engine harness. You can see it runs down here, goes to the motor. I think that this being disconnected is why the motor wouldn't start. Now, I would start the motor, test it, and show it to you guys. Problem is, I have something off right here. I have some transmission lines down off down there. If I start it and the pump runs, what's going to happen is fluid's going to spew all over the floor. We don't want to deal with that right now. So let's get that put back together uh, in a day or two here, and then we'll start it up. See if this motor works and works well. I anticipate it will. Definitely has oil in it and everything like that. One other thing I want to show you guys that I did not show you before. If you look right there... I'm gonna try and zoom in as best I can. That is the end of the axle shaft. There should be a boot covering these gears here. That's been ripped off, likely due to the accident, and that whole axle shaft is going to need to be replaced. So again, another good reason we have the donor car. I've already started taking it apart from the donor car. I'll go and show you right now. Uh, honestly, I wanted to pause and make sure that we catch all that on camera because it's a pretty important part of the build, the suspension work. But I've got it pretty much disassembled, ready to come out, and we're gonna see exactly how that comes out on the DXP car, and we'll put the new one in. That is the quick update on the DXP project, or the pizza car project, I should call it, right? All right, now that you guys are caught up on that, I wanna discuss the price of the C6 Grand Sport in its current state, and I'm also gonna tell you what I've spent on all the other parts to date and tell you my final goal with this car when it comes down to price. Now this is a 2011 C6 Corvette Grand Sport. It only has one option on it and that is what is called the NPP exhaust. Basically, it's an exhaust that has baffles in it. <laughs> When you put your foot to the floor in the car uh, past a certain RPM, the baffles open up, makes the exhaust louder. When you're cruising on the highway, car is quieter. There's no other options. This is a 1LT base Corvette. So with 8,000 miles, with a clear title, this car would run likely around 31, 32, 33,000, somewhere in the low $30,000 range. Of course, we're dealing with a salvage title here, but the nice part about this car, you guys saw it, there's a little dent on the frame and the cross members cracked. And I've got a new one sitting over there. I'm gonna show it to you. But let's get right into how much this car costs at auction. I bid on this car through eRepairables.com and the winning bid was $13,000. Now I've told you guys a million times in the past, one of the reasons I use eRepairables is they really do conceal your high bid. I bid more than $13,000. I bid somewhere around 13.8 or 13.9 for this car and that is not considering all the other fees I'm about to get to, but I won it for 13,000 even. So this car, 13,000 bucks. The auction fees were $700. Uh, they charged a percentage and that's what it ended up coming out to. I then paid another $600 to ship it. So just the car sitting here, I'm in at $14,300. Now let me show you real quick, and if you guys remember, if you look in the engine bay of this car, same thing with the auction photos, there's a lot of stuff missing up front. And of course, this is a Corvette, so these parts can be pretty pricey. 
You can see that the engine fan, condenser, and radiator are missing. And when I started looking at all the open lines, I figured that there was more than just that. I started doing some research. I learned that there was an oil cooler missing. And there's likely going to be some missing plastic shrouds and things of that nature. I haven't bought those yet because I won't know what I do and don't have that's in the trunk until I get there. But as of right now, I'm gonna run through all the parts that I purchased. I'm gonna show them to you guys. I just got them in today. And I'm gonna give you a grand total of what this car has cost me to date. So right off the bat, the most obvious thing's missing, the radiator and the condenser. I spent $110 on both of those. Those are new third-party items. If you want a General Motors products, uh, they're around $200 after getting a wholesale discount online, which most of you guys will be able to find. If the next set of parts I bought from Rock Auto. It's one of my favorite places to buy new OEM, or again, third-party parts. I bought a control arm, I bought the stabilizer bar link, and an oil cooler. Now this, is uh, the order that's probably the most interesting out of all the parts I've ordered for a few reasons. Number one, a control arm for a Corvette, you can buy them used for around 100 bucks. The problem is, is you don't know if you're buying one with 10,000 miles or maybe you're buying one with 100,000 miles. And in control arms are bushings. That's what I'm most concerned about. You see bushings break down over time and if you're buying one with a worn out bushing, well, you're just gonna have problems. You're gonna have to undo the work you already did. When it comes to control arms, I like to buy new and Rock Auto sold me one of those for 132 bucks. The uh, stabilizer bar link or the sway bar link, that was $15, so really inexpensive. Now the oil cooler. This Grand Sport is a manual transmission coupe, so it comes with a dry sump and an oil cooler. And the oil cooler is just like a small radiator, essentially. You run oil lines too, the air passes through it as you're driving and cools the oil. Well, those from General Motors run around $500. There's a bunch of companies that make aftermarket solutions. They're right around the same price. They're very, very expensive. Rock Auto had a third party part. They're the only company I saw online that had this for $65. So the next thing I bought uh, is the radiator support stabilizer bar. This is another interesting component. Uh, if you go to General Motors to try and buy this piece, it's about five or $600. And that's a part that's really low on this car. I'm sure if you run over something in the road, it easily bends, it easily breaks, and you need to get it replaced. So right there, half price or less, $260 for that, uh, I think is a very fair price. Now when it comes to the headlights on this car, I'm a little bit irritated. You see, this car was obviously disassembled by a body shop before it was deemed a salvage. What happens in a lot of cases, it happened on my Audi S3, you'll get a car that's partially disassembled. It doesn't necessarily say that it's partially disassembled, but you could clearly see in the photos at the auction that this car was disassembled. And everything that was hit on this car was hit fairly low. So even though it might have dented, pushed some things up, cracked other things underneath, like probably the radiator, I'm guessing, and the condenser were trashed in this accident, things like the headlights are a bit higher up in the top of the hood. And I imagine that whoever at the body shop disassembled this car knew that these headlights go for a lot of money, especially a mint condition set with eight thousand miles on them. These headlights are non-production anymore from General Motors, so they're very pricey. If you want a mint condition set online, I've seen them go as high as $1,500 to $2,000. There are services for four dollars to $500 that will refinish your old headlights. I was able to snag a set of blue headlights, and, and I'll get to the blue part in a minute, for $470 for both. Now there's a caveat to this. Number one, they're blue, and Corvette headlights are matched to the car. This is obviously a white car, so they need to be matched. The next part is that these Corvette headlights do come apart pretty easily, and there's replacement lenses being sold for them. So what I plan to do, and we're gonna do this on video, of course, is I'm going to take apart these Corvette headlights. We're going to sand down and paint the inside of the headlight shell to match it to the white of the car. I'll go and get a custom paint match uh, spray can that we will use a rattle cam for. We'll make sure it looks perfect before we put it back together and put brand new lenses on them. And so even though I only spent $470 on that, I anticipate to put probably another two to $300 in them. Right now, we'll keep it at $470 for the two headlights though. When I showed you underneath the car, I showed you that the leaf spring on this car cracked and shredded and it's in bad shape and obviously needs to be replaced. It's gonna come out when we take the subframe out of the car. So I went and I called the local dealership. A leaf spring through the dealership is $400. I looked online 
and it's $300. But one notable thing, and this goes for a lot of Mustangs, Corvettes, the Challengers, muscle cars, cars that people modify, people take these parts off and they upgrade them. So if you get a coilover setup on these cars, you supposedly remove the leaf springs. And there was a gentleman online on the Corvettes forum selling both of his leaf springs. He refused to split them up. Uh, for 200 bucks for a Z06. And that's pretty darn close to this car as far as the suspension brake setup goes. So I'm gonna give those a shot because $200 versus 300 for one, I've got a spare leaf spring. I can either put it on the back if I feel that it will increase the uh, handling capability of this specific car, or I can go off and sell the other one if the ride feels pretty good at that point. Again, $200 for two. That leaves me with one, hopefully to sell and make some money back. And the last parts I've purchased for this car, the airbag, the cross member, the most important part, and the fan. Now, I'm gonna get to the price in those in a minute, but I bought those parts locally at a place called Drive Trains Plus. It's owned by a friend of mine by the name of James. I've shown you this red, a Mustang he bought from Copart. It's amazing how tweaked the body of the car is in the accident. Now he buys these auction cars to part them out and sell them. We're gonna talk about that later. He's got a really neat business doing that and he specializes in these V8 cars. So he actually had a C6 Corvette there and obviously the major component that we're talking about here, the cross member, the subframe, whatever you wanna call it, that part is big, it's heavy, it would be expensive to ship. If you can find parts like this locally, whether you go on Facebook or maybe you go on Craigslist, something of the sort, this will save you a ton of money because a guy like James, he's savvy enough to know that it's gonna cost him so much in shipping and if he sells it online, maybe he's got a list on eBay or another place that takes a commission, he'd rather sell it to you locally and he's gonna negotiate a little bit better for that. Uh, so he was able to provide me with that. He had an airbag for the car, which our driver's side airbag is shot, and he had the original radiator fan there as well. Picked up all three of those parts for right around 700 bucks. It was a great deal because if you look these parts up, the cross member itself sells new for around 900 to $1,000. So picking up these three parts at that price was pretty unbelievable. So for all those parts and the car added up, I'm a little bit over $16,000 as it sits. And I think that's a good price for a Corvette that will eventually have a rebuilt title. Now, I know we're not done. I know I'm gonna put more money into this car, but my goal is to have this Corvette at $18,000 out the door when it's done. That is my goal. It's gonna be a tough one to beat. I'm gonna to have to buy a lot of fasteners when it comes to these fenders, when it comes to the bumper. Uh, I, there's a bag full of fasteners in the rear, but uh, you just don't know what is there and what's missing. I'm sure there's gonna be, like I said, some shrouds and things of that nature missing. It was really unfortunate that the body shop kept those headlights uh, because that is the breaking point of this car. Now I wanna finish by showing you the plan of attack on the cross member itself. Here, let me take you over to the car. So if you look at the car, and this is not set up properly yet, I've just got it for demonstration purposes. I've got this red bar running across the top. This is a bar I bought it at Harbor Freight Tools, and basically it is an engine stabilizer bar. What we're gonna do is get this mounted really well on the aprons. I'm not sure if we're gonna take this coolant bottle out here and mount it down there, same thing on the other side, or if we're gonna mount it where it's gonna be stable here. Problem is these fiberglass pieces, they're glued on, and I'm sure enough sort of stress on them, like supporting the motor, will crack them. So I don't wanna break any expensive Corvette parts. So that engine support bar has chains that run underneath and then support the engine from underneath. So while you're working on the cross member, the engine stays supported. Now, in my opinion, this red bar here, uh, while it's good for a thousand pounds and an LS3 weighs around 500 pounds, give or take a little bit, it's just not enough for me to feel comfortable, A, working underneath, or B, having even someone else work underneath. We're gonna have a few guys here to work on this project. However, right underneath the car where the engine meets the transmission is a really nice space. We're gonna put a jack there and we're gonna jack it up. We're gonna put a jack stand underneath it and settle it there. So not only is it being supported up top, it'll be supported down below. We'll be able to take that cross member down and you see the cross member sitting over there in the stack of parts we just saw. That cross member should bolt right in and from there it's just 
putting pieces back together. If this Corvette goes as well as planned, it's gonna be a very lucky find because you can drive it around knowing that, yeah, the title might say salvage on it, but you know that it was one piece essentially that cracked and you've got a great 8,000 mile car for a fraction of what it would normally cost. As always, I really appreciate you guys following along with this video and of course the build process. I know you wanna see me start tearing this car apart, putting it together, but I wanna do it safe and I wanna do it the right way, which requires extra hands and it requires all the right tools and everything to be set up right. That takes time. Same thing with the pizza car. A lot of you guys are, hey, just get it done already. And I really plan to knock out a lot of the pizza car this weekend, hopefully, and get it back on the road, hopefully within a couple weeks here. So if you have any questions about anything we talked about in today's video, be sure to email me. Also, if you enjoy the idea of a Corvette Grand Sport at a steep discount and like new condition when we're done, hopefully, I'm crossing my fingers here, make sure you hit that like button, guys. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will catch you very soon.